Hello and welcome in the second part of the tutorial about creating perlin worms to generate rivers in a procedurally generated map from the peaks of mountains towards the bodies of water. Now in the previous video we have implemented the logic to find the local minimas and maximas in our noise map so that we can find the starting and end point for the rivers to generate. Now we are going to implement in this video perlin worm script so it will be able to generate our path and generate a river that will meander around the train until it reaches the destination. So first of all we are going to right click and create a new C sharp script. Let's call it Perlin Worm. Okay, let's open it up in Visual Studio. Great. Now again, all the code is on GitHub repository. The link will be in the description so we can simply copy the logic for those scripts you do not have to type it by hand. So, first of all, we will need to have some variables here. I will delete the update and start methods, and I will paste the variables that we will need. The current direction will be a randomly generated direction, so this is the starting direction that our Perlin worm is facing. Now we have the current position, which is the position that we have selected, so those will be the peaks of our mountains, and the convergence point will be the point somewhere in the body of water. Now we have the noise settings for the Perlin worm, so it will be useful to generate our noise values. And we have the move to convergence points. I will want to show you how the Perlin worm works when we do not have the convergence points and how it will work when we do have the convergence points. And at the end we have weight. So we will want to apply some steering behavior so we can ensure that our Perlin worm will end up at the convergence points now let me paste the methods that we will have here. And we are going to start with our Perlin Worm constructor. Since this will not be a mono behavior, so let's delete the mono behavior inheritance. And we will have the constructor that passes the noise settings, the starting position and the convergence points, or only the start position. For the current direction, we are going to use random.insideUnitCircle.normalized value. And we are going to set the uh, noise settings and we are going to save those noise settings, the current position and if we have the convergence point. Now if we have the convergence point we are going to set the move to convergence points bulls flag to true, else to false. So those are the two constructors that we can use. Now next we will have two methods. First one will be move. So we are going to simply select a direction based on the Perlin noise and we are going to move into in this direction. And this get Perlin noise direction will simply get the float value of the noise based on our noise helper dot sum noise and passing the current position x and y and the noise settings. So first noise value will be for the starting position on our peak of the mountain based on the noise setting that we provided with. Next, to generate from our noise, which is of course value 0 to 1, a degree value, we are going to in this case map the range from 0 and 1 towards a minus 180 and 180 degrees. Now do mind that the noise value for 0 and 1 are extremely rare, most of the values will be between 0, 2 and 0, 8 probably. Next we need to generate a direction based on the rotation that we have. So it will generate a rotation based on the degrees that we provided and the vector up will be vector 3 forward, so the values will be on x and y positions and not on x and z if we would pass the vector 3 dot up. And this is because then we can convert it using vector 2 cast and the direction from three, uh, vector 3 will be converted to vector 2 and x and y values are the values that we want to save. And we are going to multiply the quaternion, so the rotation that we have generated, by the current direction, so the random direction that we have selected, and we are going to set it to be normalized, and we set it to be equal to var direction. And actually, as I can to think of it, we are using the current direction as the direction to be rotated, so instead of creating var direction, we should use the current direction. So we set the new direction to be current direction, and we will reuse it for the next step, which should probably give us a bit better looking river, and for this, I would like to change the values for the range map to be between minus 90 and 90. And now, whatever you set it here, it will make a big difference for how your river will meander around the map. Okay, 
So we are going to return a current direction to our move method. And this will be added to the current position to make a step. And the same story will be in the move towards convergence point. We will find the direction using the get Perlin noise direction, which will be basically the current direction now. And we are going to first find also the direction towards the convergence point from our current position. And since we want to always converge at this point, we will want to create an end direction, which will take the uh, direction of the Perlin noise times 1 minus the weight, so it will be 1 minus 0 0.6, so it will be 0 0.4. So this will mean that the direction from the Perlin noise will influence a bit less the end direction compared to how the direction to convergence point will influence it, since this will be uh, multiplied by 0 0.6, and we normalize this direction. So basically what it does is it ensures that we are always moving a bit closer or a bit in the direction of the convergence point and not entirely in the direction of our Perlin noise that uh, Perlin noise generates for us and at the end we add uh, again we make a step in this direction by adding it to our current position and we return the current position. Now of course moving one step at a time is nothing interesting so we will have a method that will move a specific length. Now we are going to generate a list of vector 2, so those are the positions that we are going to return, and we are going to look for each var item in the range of the length that we want to travel. So I'm going to use enumerable, right click and quick action and select using system.link, dot range, and we are going to for, uh, look for each in range 0 to length. And when we want to converge on a point, we are going to use the move to convergence points method, we're going to add the result to our list, and if this is uh, the distance between the convergent points and the result is less than zero, we are going to stop moving our Perlin worm. Now, if we want to move without the convergent point, we are going to simply call move method, and we are going to add those results to the list. Now, if our Perlin worm never reached the convergent point, we are going to loop while vector to the distance is less uh, than zero. We are going to create a while loop. If the distance is greater than 1, we are going to set the weight to be 0 0.9 and we are going to simply get the next position that is really biased towards the uh, convergent point and we are going to add those new positions until we reach our result. Now using while loop is always dangerous because we never know if the converging of this point will be stopped by the pearly noise that may be decide to go in the opposite direction, but for the most part it should work but uh, certainly this is a place that you may want to update. And we are going to basically return the list of points that we have generated using our Perlin Worm. So now we need to have a way to use this Perlin Worm. So let's go back to Unity. And we are going to create here a new script. So right click, create a script, and I will call it River Generator. Okay, let's open it up in Visual Studio. Great. Now I will want to paste the fields that we will need to have here. The, we will have a reference to our map generator since this contains the uh, map, float map of the noise values as well as the reference to our map renderer. And we have the noise settings for our rivers. We will have the river start position in case we want to start in a general position. We have the river length. I tend to set it to be 50. And we will have a, a bold bull flag. So if we want to make our river take more than one tile, if we set it to be bold, we will take as well the tiles to the right, to the left, up and down, so that we can create a bolder river instead of a single tile line. And we will have the bull convergence on, just to explore what Perlin Worm is doing when we do not give it a convergence point. Let me paste the methods that we will use here. Okay, and here we are going to have a main method that is generate rivers that will take the result from our find local maxima method. Now what these lines do is select the points that are in the snowy area. Next we are going to shuffle the list, so we are going to order them using the new GUI ID. And we are going to take five points from those lists and create this uh, a list from it. Next, we are going to create a list of local minimas. So those are the destinations that our river might want to reach. We want to again process those 
and order them by the value of the noise uh, this time and we are going to take 20 most prominent uh, values and all you need to do now is to look for each item in the list to re of the reverse to create and we are going to pass to a create river method the starting point as well as well as the list of the water minimas now the next method is the create river this is a private method that takes the starting point of a river as well as the list of water minimas we are going to create a perlin worm and if the convergence is on we want to find the convergence point by selecting the water minimas ordering them by the distance towards the start position of our current river and we want to take the first position that is closest to our uh, starting position next we are going to spawn a perlin worm and we are going to pass it to it river settings so those are the noise settings start position and the closest water position that we have generated if we do not want to converge on a point we are going to skip the convergence point and then we are going to simply call var position equal warm dot move length and we are going to pass the river length that we have set here as the parameter and then we are going to simply start a coroutine that will place our river tiles and in this coroutine we are going to look for each position we are going to get the cell position from our map generator dot map render if the position is on the tile map so if, if it is in range uh, we want to set it in our tile map so map generator dot map render set tile to tile position and we want to set it to be map generator dot water tile and the last if statement is when we want to make the water bolder so we want it to take more than one tile now to do that we want to set it only when the bold uh, checkbox is set to true as well as we want to avoid setting the bold rivers when we are in the hill area and all we need to do here is set the tiles to the right left up and down to be river as well and again we are going to start this coroutine when we want to create a river so let's save this and let's go back to unity okay all i want to do is select our map generator in our hierarchy and drag here our river generator i will drag our map generator as a reference for the river settings i want to set the start frequency to be 0.06 we can leave the three octaves and persistence on the uh, value of 0.5 now the start position uh, as I recall is not working because we are always selecting the local maximas as the start of the river so let's simply uncheck the convergence on and make sure that you assign to your create river button uh, a new event so class icon select your map generator and select your river generator and select generate rivers okay I have started the game I'm going to press show maximas since those are the starting points where our river can start I'm going to now to select create rivers and you can see that now the river is being created and this is all Perlin noise random walk the convergence here is just by accident if we create more rivers you can see that now those rivers go however they are uh, pleased to go and there is no certainty if they will converge on a body of water like they did here or here now if we reset the map and we select our map generator and select convergence on now if we select create rivers every river should go towards the body of the water and if we create more rivers maybe we'll see here and here the rivers always converge on the body of water that is nearby let's reset the map i'm going to show maximas and minimas and again let's press create rivers and now we can see that those goes towards the closest uh, minimas that there are and those has been converted converted to the water tile since I, we are creating those water bodies and we can create more rivers and as you can see those will nicely converge at the water sources as well now one issue is that they go through the mountain so you might want to implement some sort of a star algorithm that will find a path around the mountain but of course you could always modify the tile map and make the hill size of this into grass so to generate some kind of break in the mountain so that river flows through the mountain okay that's it for this video thank you very much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment 
And if you find this video helpful, consider supporting me through Patreon or checking out my Udemy course, the link will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, take care!